Hey friends, today's journey starts in 1894. And at this home, this is actually the back of the house. So over 120 years ago, this was the back of the house. Now you'll see it from the road and you have these beautiful flower window boxes filled with the annuals, the petunia. So let's go on and see what's tucked behind these skip laurels. Now a skip laurel is a really popular shrub because it, it doesn't drop its leaves in the winter. It actually keeps them and it can grow to be 18 feet high and it adds a real nice softness and touch to any home and privacy. So let's go behind the skip laurel and as you'll notice right here on the ground are what are becoming so popular are these little ornamental figurines. This particular figurine is one of four that represent the four children that live here. So they're just cute and they're nestled right into the tick seed. Remember tick seed is a perennial and the deer do not like tick seed. That's a win-win for me. And you'll also notice a lot of the two-toned pastas. So let's go on over behind this skip world and show you something that's so magical and hidden away. As you see, behind the cattail, which I haven't seen cattail since I was a kid from the Midwest. It's such a cool thing. And with cattail, you can actually dry it out and use it in ornamental pieces that you have. But tucked away behind the cattail and the pastas is this corn pond. And right now, there are three fish in this pond. They love it so much here that they had babies last year. They had 30 of them and they've all been adopted out. But they love it, they're nestled in here. So, if you come back in this little magical spot, can't you just imagine having your coffee, your tea, a little afternoon drink or beverage, reading a book, listening to the sound of this beautiful, beautiful pond. You don't need any other music. It's so breathtaking and gentle. So let's go on over here for some more old fashioned charm. Because at one time, this little area it's been here probably from the original home when it was built, but no one really knows because a lot, there was a big fire that happened and a lot of certificates and things like that were ruined uh, in the fire on when homes were built around here. But look how gorgeous this is. It's just so quiet. But the ultimate in old fashioned charm is the hydrangea. And I'm gonna call it the big H or the little H so that I don't keep saying that and get tongue twisted with it. But the big H is really an old fashioned beauty. So let's go over here. Well, real quick, there's a climbing hydrangea yet. Right here, it hasn't blossomed yet. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, right here's some little ones coming. But let's go on over here. And as you can see, this is called an endless summer hydrangea, big H, an endless summer. This is a hybrid. And the reason why it's called that is this will blossom all summer. All you need to do is snip off the flower once it's died so that it gets that energy to produce new flowers. Remember, it all takes us a little bit of energy to look pretty, right? So our flowers are the same way. But when you go to cut and have the new growth for the next year, you do it in May. And that's with the hybrid to end the summer. You trim it back in May, that's very important. And you trim it only, we're gonna look at this as a little example. It's not completely dead. Here's a little bit of dead. You only trim the dead wood back. You don't trim in May anything that's green because it's gonna have the tiny little buds coming up. That's with this hybrid. Now we're gonna go over and take a look at another unique hybrid. It's right back here. And this is called Incredible. Not Incredibles, Incredible. And they are like a snowflake. And as you can see, things are planted in threes. Everything is in its symmetric, symmetric form. They are like a snowball perfectly. And these, the Incredibles, they actually grow on their own stem. So you just snip them and they're good. They're tucked away, they get sun, but they also get a nice shade. Okay, our third hydrangea that we're going to look at is called the Limelight. And I love that name because it just reminds me of, it reminds me of a club a long time ago called the Limelight. Anyway, as you see, you have your grasses here and you know how I feel about grasses. I love grasses. This soft curb that has been designed, and then your limelight right here. They have a really iridescent green and white to them, and they glisten with the sun. They're really a cool looking hybrid of hydrangea. 
Now I didn't show you the most common, which is called a big leaf hydrangea. And that only blossoms one time. And you cut that back in fall or early spring. You don't cut it completely down, only a little bit of the dead wood. So that is called the big leaf, but we don't have that. So when this house was built in 1894, and we're gonna do a quick scan of it, this is actually the front of the home. And there was probably a reason that this was the front of the home. Because in 1892 was when electricity started to be put into residential homes. At one time, this house most likely had a wraparound porch. So they needed to take advantage of all the sunlight that they had available due to really not having electricity. So our last little thing we're gonna look at, there's so many beautiful things. As you can see, the trees, the spruces with the blue tone to them up against all the other greens and colors is just breathtaking, I love it. But this is a really special tree I wanna show you. And it's right over here. And this is called a coral bark Japanese maple. A coral bark Japanese maple. It is a four season tree. So each season it has different colors, but in the winter it's really special because as it somewhat matches my fingernail polish, in the winter this bark turns a coral red and the contrast that it has with the winter landscape is just breathtaking. What a, what a tree to see out in the middle of the winter. So this is a special one. Friends, we're gonna end right there. I hope you learned something. I hope you became enthused about something and you wanna try something new in your garden. And I look forward to our next video. Love ya.